common for people to over dramatize a cold or even exaggerate an injury. However, for our next guest, the consequences of lying about an illness have plagued her entire life. Well, 10 years ago, after the death of her mother, Helen Naylor began reading her mother's handwritten diaries. But instead of finding comfort, Helen was so horrified to discover that her mum, Eleanor, had been, in fact, faking debilitating illnesses, including ME and Parkinson, for over three decades as part of a condition called Munchausen's syndrome. Well, Eleanor has, uh, had also lied about having prolapses, breast lumps, knee problems, as well as pretending to have seizures when, in fact, she had been perfectly healthy her entire time. Oh so God. Helen has now written a book, uh, which is there, uh, detailing her experiences, and, uh, and she joins us Hi, now. Hello. And this is the most extraordinary story. Thank you for coming yeah. in. Oh, it's um, my So, life growing up, um, your, your mum Eleanor, uh, dad Alan, um, and the first chapters of the book are about your early years, and things changed when you were about seven, didn't they? Yeah, so when I was about seven, my dad um, retired from work because he had some quite serious heart and lung problems. And um, my mum, at the same time, developed ME. And that just changed life, really. Um, everything revolved around my mum's illness. Um, even though I knew my dad was more seriously ill, it was mum's ME that everything revolved around. And we couldn't go out for day trips anymore. Um, we, she didn't take me out at weekends. And every weekend or holiday, um, I was basically left on my own in the afternoons. My mum would go to bed, my dad would go down the pub, and I was just left to kind of entertain myself and look after myself. And look after them. I mean, you and were a carer. So the other thing about your mum, as well, having these illnesses that we later find out weren't, weren't even to be believed, mm. she was unkind to you. I mean, at the age of 13, your self-esteem was so incredibly low. You didn't have anyone to turn to. You couldn't rely on your parents, particularly your mum, for anything and you self-harmed also. Yeah, so, I mean, she used to tell me things that, like I was ugly and stupid and fat and I just really hated myself. Oh, because she was my so mum, I totally believed her. I, I believe she was telling me the truth. It's so cruel. Yeah, really so, cruel. I mean, even to the point where you had a fire, I think the washing machine caught fire, didn't it? Yeah. My... And you were, you, you were left <laughs> to sort that out yourself. Yeah, my friend and I were playing downstairs one day when I was about 10 and, um, and we heard this noise in the kitchen and went in and it was full of smoke. The washing machine was sparking. And I shouted for my mum because she was upstairs in bed. She didn't come. So I ran upstairs to see her to say, what do I do? And she told me to go back in the room and switch off the washing machine. Oh my God. Would you just think now, like a primary age child, you'd You'd never consider. You never You'd be like, get out of the house. So expl explain through it, because the university, you say, was a relief, you know, sort of getting yes. away. Um, what, what else did she do and were there any red flags? There were loads of red flags throughout my, my uh, years growing up. I think uh, probably the biggest one was when um, I was 16 and we went to America um, on this amazing holiday and uh, she was completely better. She... <laughs> she wouldn't walk me to the end of the street when we were at home, but she could walk for block after block around America. We had this amazing fortnight of, like, amazing experiences. And I really believed that America had cured her. And I couldn't understand when we came back why we didn't move to America, because I really believed... How quickly everything. did she go back downhill again? Oh, the moment we got home, she got a wheelchair to the plane on the way back. Um, and, yeah. So she um, passed away at the age of 69 in 2016 and you were sad because you were unable to sort of re reconcile these differences that you had yeah. between you. But it was two years after this that you found her diaries. I mean, she was a prolific diary writer for 55 years. She'd been writing this diary every single day. Yeah. So there was a lot to go through <laughs> yeah. here. And you think that in some way that would bring you some solace, but this didn't. This was the opposite. It was such a shock. I, I really didn't expect to find any of it. So I, I found out that um, this faking of illnesses had been going on her whole life. Um, she'd been going to the doctors for all sorts of things, you know, as a 20-year-old healthy woman. Um, but the most shocking thing was to find out that she'd actually abused me as a, as a small child. Explain your arm. So um, when I was... Um, well, I, I believe that when I was four, I, rem I have a memory where I fell off a chair and landed on my arm and was taken to hospital. And when I was growing up, my mum told me that um, when they got to hospital, they x-rayed my arm and said that I hadn't broken it, but it had been broken three months earlier. And she said that this was because I'd been sat in the car and reached back to sh close the door mm. and she'd shut it on my arm. 
But once I read the diaries, I found out I wasn't four, I was two. So that can't have happened. Two-year-olds don't reach back to close car doors. So she broke my arm, but I don't know how. And did she break your arm so that she could take you to hospital? Take you to the doctor? No, no, because she didn't take me to hospital. She just, well, she just broke your arm? She just broke my arm. And it wasn't until I fell off this chair three months later that they found out that I had broken it in the past. Oh, that's so and She was She was faking Parkinson's and that's a... That's a a terrible condition yeah. to have and, and it's a tough one to fake. It is, and that was her real downfall. I think if she'd carried on with the ME, no one would really have realised what was going on because ME is so difficult to diagnose and there's such a range of symptoms. But for the Parkinson's, there's specific um, tests, there's specific um, uh, symptoms and you, you can't really fake it. She was it. confronted by a nurse once. She was, yeah. And what was her reaction to that? She went absolutely mad. So this, this lovely middle-class woman who looked really vulnerable and, and ill um, started shouting and swearing at these nurses and demanding that she get the medication that she wanted. Wow. I mean, yeah. it is an extraordinary story and, and it we were so horribly betrayed yeah. um, by the person that you should have been able to have trusted the most. Now you d discovered those diaries and it's really surprising that she would be so honest and write it mm. all down, knowing that probably one day you were going to find them. Um, yeah. Is it possible for you to forgive her for what she did? I think I'd like to think I can forgive her. I, I don't really feel anger towards her. It's a really unnatural emotion for me to feel, but... Um, I'm a Christian and I hope that I will, can forgive her, I, but I feel like it's an ongoing process that will mm. just go on and on, I think. It's odd that she lied to everyone else but not to herself in those diaries. Yeah, it's a real, really strange one. I, I mean, with Munchausen, since I've looked into it, um, people don't believe they have these illnesses. They know that they are faking it. Um, so... Yeah, but in the diary, she doesn't even pretend that she's ill. She writes about going apple picking. She writes about going out for city trips and um, having lunch with friends, going shopping. Do you think she expected you to read those diaries one day? She certainly expected them to be read um, because she put directions in some of them um, about what page to go to and things like this. But I don't... Wow. I, yeah, I know. That's and you kind of wonder what was she writing them for? Um, but, yeah, I, d I don't know. And I don't know whether she believed that she could trick the reader as she had tricked the people in her life. Extraordinary story. God, you, were, you had no idea who she was, did you? That's so That's it. weird to grow up with somebody who's your mum and not know, not know them. Yeah, and I still don't feel like I've got a real grasp on who she was. Um, it's just impossible to know. And I have my, my own memories, my mum's stories, and then her diaries, these three, like, conflicting... Mm. Um, yeah. Well, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. I'm sorry you had to yeah. live through it and that Thank you. shocking discovery. Thank you. You're a mother yourself it, now yeah. and you're having that experience of what real motherhood is. So, yeah, you know, definitely. That's, thank God for that. Well, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Um, this is the book that we've been uh, we're talking about. Um, incredible story. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank, thank you very much.